If you tell me the day you're going to die, I'll tell you exactly when you should take your CPP. But most of us don't know when that day will actually be, so what can we do to make an informed decision? Well, we know it's a bad idea to take CPP early just because you know someone who passed away young, or even worse yet, you read about someone who died young in a YouTube comment or a news article. In addition to this specific reason, most people make their CPP timing decisions based on cognitive biases, feelings, hunches, stories from friends, and incomplete information. But honestly, I don't care. That's your decision to make, and you can make it. But if you're wanting to make better decisions with your money, in this video, we'll talk about what the data says about dying in your 60s, and then a legitimate reason to take your CPP early. Many people hear about people dying young, and then assign that probability to their own life. This is something called availability bias. It's the idea that we overestimate the likelihood of events based on your ability to simply recall an example, particularly if that example is vivid or recent, so you can think of a friend or a family member who maybe died in a car accident. If you're thinking about taking CPP early with the idea that you might pass away in your 60s, you'll start thinking about other people who died in their 60s or earlier. I know you can probably think of one right now. But that isn't the most likely outcome. It's just availability bias simply because you can think of the example, not because it's the most likely scenario. Many comments I see online mention a friend, an uncle, a parent, somebody who died young, and that shaped their decision on when to take CPP. So this is happening all the time. I also have to assume that many people don't even know their options or the benefits of taking it later. Just take a look at when Canadians take their CPP payments. Almost everybody takes it either at 60 or 65. You can see those spikes on the graph right there. It's completely unrealistic to assume that people are making informed decisions on CPP when it just happens that these two time periods of 60 and 65 account for nearly 70% of all CPP starts. And virtually no one is deferring it past 65, even though that's what the math says would be the most advantageous for the vast majority of people. Of the people who take their CPP at 60, based on the surveys and anecdotal data I've seen online, most are worried about dying young and not getting anything out of it. But here are the actual probabilities of dying in Canada from the general population. If you're between the ages of 60 and 64, your general probability of death is only 3.59%. And then between the ages of 65 and 69, it's still only 5.46%. This is very small. Let's look at this a slightly different way. If you're a 60-year-old male, you have a 50% chance of living to 89 and age 91 for a 60-year-old female. So if you're thinking, well, it's a coin toss whether I die early or not, no, it's not. If you want to use data to make a better decision, you're far more likely to live well into your 80s than you are to die in your 60s. So with that information, you're more likely to benefit from a deferring CPP than taking it early. However, this is where a good reason to take your CPP early comes in. If you know your probability of death is meaningfully higher than the general public, then you could consider taking your CPP sooner. And this could be due to, say, illness, or even things like your lifestyle. So if you're a smoker, heavy drinker, drug user, these are things that would shorten your life expectancy but wouldn't necessarily be considered illnesses by traditional definitions. Now, I'm not sure how many people are doing other things like this in their 60s, but having dangerous hobbies like wingsuit flying or cave diving, motorcycle racing, free climbing, you know, you, can, you name it. They're highly dangerous activities and they would increase your probability of death. So perhaps you've heard this before on other videos about a shorter life expectancy being a good reason to take CPP early. But now I'm going to take it one step further. If you have a spouse and you pass away, your spouse will get 60% of your CPP. From the government's website, it says you will receive 60% of the contributor's retirement pension if you are not receiving other CPP benefits. Did you notice that last part? If you are not receiving other CPP benefits. This is the real wrinkle because if your spouse is receiving a full CPP retirement benefit already, then they won't get any of your survivor's pension if you pass away. So yes, your spouse can get 60% of your CPP if you die, but they won't be able to get more than the individual maximum. This is an extra reason to consider taking CPP early if you have a shortened life expectancy or a higher probability of death. Because this is a situation where your CPP might actually disappear if the worst should happen. It might be more prudent in this case to take it early and invest the payment to build up a bit of a cash reserve for your spouse. Everyone's situation is different though, so I don't want to give the impression that everyone should do that, but it is an option. 
So you can make the CPP decision that you feel best about, or you can make your money decisions based on evidence and data and other resources that will help increase your odds of getting it right. It's impossible to know in advance what the right decision is because of how your life changes over time and when we all inevitably pass away. So if you're in that group of people who want to make the most informed decisions with your money, you'll probably like my channel and some of the videos I've planned for the future. So liking, subscribing, and sharing the video with your like-minded friends really makes a difference for me, and I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching.